Wigstock dilemma is that when you have a mixed stock in the ocean where all of the salmon are swimming in the same area, or if you don't know where all of the fish in the ocean are swimming at one time, you have to manage the entire fishery at those low harvest targets to be sure that you don't harvest the critical stocks at a higher rate. And this leads to the situation where you have river systems and stocks of fish that are in healthy numbers that could be harvested at much higher rates, but because of those weak stocks mixed in with them and the lack of knowledge about where those stocks are at a given time, you have to restrict the whole fishery to the lowest harvest rate. This the example in 2006 was the situation on the Klamath. We had very healthy runs of Sacramento River fish. We had healthy runs of Oregon coastal stocks. And even at that time, the uh, Columbia River stocks were doing much better. But because of that one run of fish going back into the Klamath, the entire coast of Oregon and most of Northern California uh, had a severely restricted seasons. We, up until now, have been managing fish on a very small number of coated wire tags which are inserted in the snout of the fish. When the fish is caught, that tag can be read and then they find out where it came from. Coated wire tags are put on about 5% of hatchery fish that are released. That doesn't include any of the wild fish. So that means that one in 20 hatchery fish, we can tell where it came from when the coated wire tag is recovered in the fishery. Now, coated wire tags are recovered at, at the dock, so when you want to know where that fish was caught, all you know is that it was caught somewhere in the area that a fisherman fishing out of Newport, for example, or Tillamook or Coos Bay would fish. So you have about a 100-mile radius on where that fish was caught. The other thing about coated wire tags is that we get a very coarse time frame for when the fish was caught. Because so few tags are caught, we have to aggregate them usually uh, by month to get enough tags to have significant data. The idea for Project Cruise was that we could get a much finer scale resolution on stock distributions. Most fisheries are managed using data that may be from last year or five years ago. But the problem with salmon is that salmon are so fast growing and they're so dynamic in how their population changes. And we have so many stocks that using old information is going to mislead you sometimes because it's not what's actually occurring this year. So uh, we recognize that very early, that one advantage of our project was the need for real time. We designed this project to do just that. We work with fishermen so they could collect information on their boats and then get that back to shore as soon as they land. And within two, three, or four days, have all the data into a database. I think one of the exciting aspects of this project is how people from different groups, scientists and managers and fishermen, all came to the table to address this problem. Some of our best science ideas have not come from scientists. They've come from fishermen because fishermen spend a lot of time in the ocean, they understand how fish behave in the ocean, and they help generate some of our hypothesis about why we, they were catching salmon of certain stocks in certain locations. The way the management system is set up now, it fosters the rivalries between fishermen, scientists, and managers. The managers view the fishermen as always trying to game the system, the fishermen view the managers as always trying to tell them what to do. At the same time, uh, fishermen are suspicious of scientists because it seems to them that every time they provide more information, better information to the scientists, the scientists figure out a way to restrict them more in their fishing activities. When we first started contracting and talking to fishermen about this, there was initially quite a bit of, of uh, suspicion. They were thinking, well, is this just going to lead to another stock of fish, yet another stock of fish that we have to manage carefully for and, and we're going to have more closures. They were very concerned. We originally, with the benefit of the some volunteers, went out prior to this season in 2006 and brought in some fish, some stocks. We brought in about 200 fish 
from one trip. We took them over to the laboratory in South Beach and they did the genetic analysis. Within about 10 days, they knew the river of origin of approximately 190 of those fish. In the 200 fish, there were two coated wire tags. Now the fishermen know what this means. Those two tags were, first of all, they were only from hatchery fish. And second, they wouldn't have even been analyzed until the following year. We knew within 10 days where 190 of those fish came from. The fishermen got it. They began to realize this project has got the potential to put them back on the water much more. One of the heroes of our project is the late Scott Boley, a commercial fisherman out of Gold Beach. Scott Boley um, was a core individual to this project. He was very excited by it, but he was worried about how the information would be used. And that tip is very typical in fisheries because the fishery management system is very complex. And one thing the industry was worried about was would the information be used in ways, instead of helping them, that might hurt the industry. It took two or three meetings, meeting with the industry, talking about the advantages, disadvantages of this project and what it might show or reveal, before they said, we see huge advantages to this project. And Scott then became the strongest advocate and the visionary for this project. He, for example, more than almost anyone on our team recognized the power of the internet and of a website to share this information. And that was a rare thing. We're developing this information network that will enable the fishermen to actually see, catch data and fishing patterns while they're on the water and also will enable the uh, managers and the scientists and the marketers to see these same data. To pull together the fishermen and take, to coordinate fisheries and to take care of the funding parts of this project, we thought that the, the logical and smartest entity to be the lead on it was the Oregon Salmon Commission. We received assistance from the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board and that allowed us to hire fishermen to be at sea to collect samples and this helped develop collaboration and trust between fishermen and scientists because the fishermen were using their data, bringing it in and trusting it to the scientists to do appropriate work with that. And when the fishermen and the industry received disaster assistance funding, we put aside some of that money for this project knowing how important it was.